So today I'm going to do a flight review, which we haven't done on this channel before, on the Asiania Airlines flight from Sydney, Kingsford to Incheon in South Korea. So here we go. Hi, my name is Rafi, and on this channel, I talk about all things tech, travel, and all things a tad bit random. So if you haven't, like and subscribe and all that jazz, and let's get going. So this flight was thanks to Samsung Australia for flying me to the Samsung Unpacked event just a couple of months ago. And for the very first time, I flew Asiana Airlines, which I have never flown before, didn't even know they existed. So I was on flight OZ0602, going from Sydney to Incheon, and it was a 10 and a half hour flight on the Boeing 777-200LR, so that's the long range one. I was flying in economy, so this is not business class or anything, this is just your standard seat that you would have booked. I was sitting in seat 24C, which is the aisle. The configuration is 333, and I was in the aisle next to the window. First impressions. I have never flown Asiana before. From the outside, the plane looked fine. The interior is lots of browns. It has a very dated look to it with a few hints of color here and there. Nothing bad. It's just, you know, you walk in and you immediately go, yeah, it's a bit of an older plane. And I was actually really lucky that no one else was in my row. So I got the whole row to myself. Uh, I call that the business class and economy. After we got on board, we had a very prompt departure and we started flying. So we had a fairly light flight, so I had the entire row to myself. After takeoff, I had a quick fiddle with the in-flight entertainment system. It was a very responsive unit. They had a small smattering of English content as well as things in Korean and other languages as well, which was nice to see. It's nowhere near as extensive as what you'd see on Emirates or some of the other carriers, but for a 10 hour flight, there was plenty to watch, though I didn't actually really watch much of it anyway. I had a lot of work to do. On that note, the seat, like I mentioned, ample legroom, but every single one had a international PowerPoint, so you could plug in any plug. One thing to note is that the plane does not have any Wi-Fi, so I basically was editing videos during the flight itself, so that's something to be aware of. The other thing I noticed during the flight is that on the ceiling, unlike most aircraft, there is no individual air vent. There is no air vent that you can redirect. I normally like a little bit of air on me, so that was pretty different. They do give you an amenities kit and inside a toothbrush, some toothpaste and some slippers. No eye mask or anything like that, but hey, I appreciated that. Soon after takeoff, we had our first meal. The staff were fairly responsive in terms of getting it to you and it was a typical Asian affair. You had a choice of two. I went with the seafood option on this case, which was actually quite good, uh, especially for an economy class meal. The Asian carriers, I feel like they actually have something that's quite flavorful and it doesn't taste like it was prepared months and months ago. So I enjoyed it. They were very responsive in both serving lunches and as well as actually taking it afterwards so that you had plenty of time without dishes and whatnot in front of you. The flight itself was very smooth and after doing a couple of hours of work, I had the road to myself, so I actually went off to sleep. I woke up a couple of hours later and noticed there was another service going on. I thought it was the next meal time, but it turns out that almost every hour, every two hours, the flight attendants were coming by to offer snacks or some water, which I thought was really nice. They were very attentive and constantly checking on the passengers to make sure that everyone was having a great experience. Just before coming into landing, uh, we had another meal service. This time around, I went with the beef bulgogi option, which was, again, quite nice considering it's a traditional Korean dish. One thing I did notice about this flight was that the bathrooms were huge. Now, I've been in business class before, but this has got to be one of the biggest bathrooms I've seen on a plane. So, as weird as it is, here's a quick video from inside the flight. Okay. Huge 
The other unique thing about this flight was that just before we came to land, there was a whole plane stretch, as you can see everyone doing. I have never been on a flight where this has happened before. Before long, the 10 and a half hours were up and we were coming into land in Incheon. So overall for economy, I would say this rates quite highly. This is a seven or an eight out of 10 for me. While the plane itself was a little bit dated and the interior scheme just looks like it's a little bit older and you can tell that the plane is a little bit older. The actual service from the staff and everything else was really good. It more than made up for it. Whilst Asiania is not a budget carrier, it isn't one of the ones that has a huge premium on the tickets as well. So considering that it does is dated on the inside, their service more than makes up for it. And I would happily fly them again. I'm actually really curious to see what their business class product is like. And maybe one day in the future, I'll get to have a try. But for now, that's it for my review. Thank you, Samsung, actually, not for sponsoring the video or anything, but for actually flying me there for the event. That was a quite a fun event. Now, there will be future videos coming up about the Unpacked event itself and what it was like. Now, if you haven't already, please do subscribe for more videos like this if you enjoyed it. There will be future ones about the Unpacked event itself. I have one about some more tech unboxings coming up, as well as a few tips and tricks for how to shoot epic photos. But until then, bye, like and subscribe. See you next time.